Hey there, and welcome to your own personal deep dive. You're interested in seasonal affective disorder, and uh, based on what you shared with us, looks like you're really trying to get a grip on this whole SAD thing. It's more than just, you know, knowing the definition. Right. So we're going on a bit of a quest today, a quest for knowledge. And trust me, this is one mystery you'll actually want to solve. It really is about understanding why it matters, especially to you. And get this. Millions of Americans experience SAD every year, and, and you've heard of the winter blues, right? Sure. But SAD is actually a clinically recognized form of depression. That's right, yeah. It's way more than just feeling a little down in the chips when those days get shorter, which is why it's so important to, to remember that because SAD is a clinical diagnosis, yeah. you know, it's something to be aware of and, and address proactively. It's like our bodies are these incredible machines, right? Yeah. But every now and then they need a little tune-up. Exactly. Especially when, when the seasons change. And you're right. It is often linked to those shorter, darker days of winter. But, and this is interesting, even folks who live in sunny places, you know, year-round, they can still experience SAD. Really? Oh, yeah. See, it's not just about the amount of light, but how our internal clocks react to those changes in light patterns. No, hold on, back up internal clocks. Like, are we talking about our actual hearts here? Not quite, though it can feel like that sometimes, right? Yeah. No, we're talking about your circadian rhythm. Basically, it's your body's natural 24-hour cycle. Okay. It tells you when to sleep, wake up, even when to eat. Wow. It's like, like a conductor leading an orchestra. Make sure all those instruments are in sync. Right. But if that conductor's a little off, the music gets muddled. <laughs> okay, that makes a lot more sense. It's fascinating, really. So so when the amount of daylight changes, it throws our internal conductors off. Right. And that can, like, mess with our mood. Exactly. And that's all because of these chemical messengers in our brains. Hormones. Hormones, right, right. We're talking about melatonin, you know, makes you sleepy. Yeah. And serotonin, linked to mood, often called the feel-good hormone. Okay, I'm I'm starting to see how this is all connected, right? Less daylight means more melatonin, which explains the whole, like, I just want to hibernate all winter thing. Makes sense. But, but but what about serotonin? Where does that fit in? Well, when those days get shorter, you know what happens. Serotonin levels, they kind of take a nosedive. Oh, no, not good. And here's where it gets really interesting, right? Okay. Lower serotonin levels. Huh. That might actually be why we crave sugary treats and comfort foods more in the winter. Wait, seriously? Yeah. It's our body's way of trying to boost that feel-good chemical. So you mean to tell me that my sudden urge to eat an entire pan of brownies is actually my brain trying to self-medicate? In a way, yeah, you could say that. And it's this whole complex interplay that researchers believe might be contributing to, you know, to those feelings of fatigue, low mood, even, you know... Like the winter weight gain struggle. Ex Ugh. Okay, this is all making a lot more sense now. But um, before we get into how this whole essay thing plays out... Let's talk about what actually causes those hormone levels to go all out of whack in the first place. What do you think? Great question. So we've been on this quest to like really unpack SAD, and we've uncovered this whole connection between light hormones and our internal timekeepers. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? It really is. But before we move on, there was one more piece of this puzzle in, in what you shared, and that's vitamin D. Right. So where does that fit into all of this? Another good question, and it actually connects really well with what we've been talking about, sunlight. You see, it's not just about setting our internal clocks. Okay. It's also super important for our bodies to make vitamin D. Right, the sunshine vitamin, but how does that impact our mood? Well, studies have shown the strong connection, right, between not having enough vitamin D and mood disorders, mm -hmm. like depression, for example. Yeah, and since we get way less sunlight during those fall and winter months, it's pretty common for people to be low on vitamin D then. It's like this chain reaction. Yeah. Less sunlight, less vitamin D, and then bam, our mood just tanks. It makes you wonder about people who live in places that, you know, don't get that much sunlight even in the summer. You're right. And that's actually a really interesting area of research because it shows how when it comes to dealing with SAD, there isn't just one magic solution. It's often about a bunch of different things working together. Interesting. But there are things you can do. In fact, you included some great natural remedies for SAD in the research you shared. Okay, so we've covered the what and the why of SA. We have. But now for the part I'm really interested in, how do we tackle this thing? Yeah, let's get into it. Let's uh, shed some light on those solutions, pun totally intended. I see what you did there. And you're right, there are some really promising natural ways to, to manage SAD. Okay. One that you highlighted 
and it's one we hear about a lot, is light therapy. Yeah, it sounds kind of simple, right? It does. More light, better mood. But how does it actually work? Is it just like sitting under one of those giant lamps all day? Not quite, though I can see why you'd think that. Light therapy, it uses a special light box, mm -hmm. right? And it mimics natural sunlight, and, and it's more focused, and it's way brighter than your typical lamp. Okay. It's like... The thinking is that if you get some of this bright light every day for a bit, usually in the morning, yeah, it can actually help reset that that internal clock we talked about. So it's kind of like tricking your brain into thinking it's a bright, sunny morning, even if it's gloomy and gray outside. Exactly. And it can be, you know, really effective for some people. But I know the research you shared also mentioned some potential side effects. So you always want to be careful. Yeah, it can't be all sunshine and rainbows, right? Right. Like with anything else. So Which... what are the potential downsides? Well, some people might get headaches or their eyes might get kind of strained or they might even have trouble sleeping if they use the light box too late in the day. Makes sense. So it's definitely important to you know talk to your doctor before starting light therapy just to, to make sure it's right for you. Right. Safety first. Now, you also had some information on, on exercise as a way to boost your mood, which honestly, as someone who basically turns into a bear and hibernates all winter, it doesn't always sound that fun. I hear you. But I'm open to it if it if it really works. Well, there's a reason you hear about exercise for, for mood improvement all the time. Even for people who don't experience that say, it really can make a difference. And it all comes back to those feel-good chemicals. There they are again. Right. When you exercise, your brain, it lets out these things called endorphins. Endorphins. Yeah. And they, they have this mood-boosting, pain-relieving effect. Okay. So it's not just about, like fitting into your your holiday outfit it's about giving your brain a chemical boost exactly and the information you shared it even said that the key is to be consistent so even if it's just short bursts of exercise like a quick walk at lunch it can really add up okay that i can do even if i'd rather be curled up inside i think we all feel that way sometimes so we've got light therapy exercise and and of course we can't forget about vitamin d Getting enough of that sunshine vitamin can also be a big help when it comes to dealing with SAD, right? 100%. Sunlight helps our bodies make vitamin D, so it, it just makes sense that during the winter, when we're not getting as much sun, taking a vitamin D supplement could help. Right. Some studies even suggest it can, like actually improve mood and, and even reduce SAD symptoms. Soaking up those rays, even if it has to be from a pill, right? Something like that. Speaking of natural ways to boost your mood, um, your research also mentioned that simply going outside, even when it's cold out, can make a difference. Absolutely. Even when it's like cloudy and gray in the winter, mm. you still get more natural light outdoors than you do indoors. And even a little bit of that exposure can can go a long way. So even if it's just a quick walk around the block, it's worth, you know, bundling up and getting that dose of natural light. It all adds up, right? It really does. Small steps consistently. I love mm -hmm. it. Exactly. Now, on top of those lifestyle changes, you also shared some really fascinating research on some therapeutic approaches to SAD, like uh, cognitive behavioral therapy or CBT. Yes. CBT. That one was really interesting to me because it seems to like ap approach SAD in a totally different way. It, does, it really does. It's like instead of adding something like light therapy or exercise, CBT helps you like change how you think, right? Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> so with light therapy, right, you're addressing those potential biological factors of SAD. Okay. But CBT, it's more about changing those negative thought patterns and those behaviors yeah. that can, you know, that can really bring us down. Especially in those those dreary winter months. Look at that, yeah. So it's almost like um, like you're giving yourself the set of tools, you know, to to help navigate those emotional ups and downs that that come with the changing seasons. I like that. That's a great way to put it. And you know what I thought was really interesting? I was I was reading through the research you shared, and it actually said that CBT in the long run might be even more effective than light therapy for some people. Yeah, that's true. There is some some promising evidence of that. It seems like. Like those folks who, who learn these tools, the techniques they, they get from CBT, they might actually see, you know, longer lasting relief from their SAD symptoms. Wow. It's amazing how how interconnected our thoughts and feelings and behaviors really are. It really is. And speaking of interconnectedness, we, we can't forget about the impact of, of what we eat. Like we talked about those those wintry cravings. Oh, yeah, the cravings for carbs and sugary treats. Exactly. And yeah. and your research makes it pretty clear that while those comfort foods might feel good in the moment, they're not really doing us any favors in the long run, are they? Not really. And it's interesting, right, because those cravings, they're often our body's 
way of trying to deal with 